But first, more terrible polls for Joe Biden, more panic from his fellow Democrats who are now begging him to retire. If the 2024 race were held today, Donald Trump would beat Joe Biden in a hypothetical matchup, according to a new CBS poll. He'd even beat uh, Kamala Harris by more. But Trump even gets to that all-important 50 percent threshold. Biden, meanwhile, is more unpopular than ever. Look at this number. 72 percent think that Biden is not physically healthy enough to be president. He's not. Only 34 percent believe that Biden could actually finish a second term before resigning or dying. Joe Biden himself doesn't even seem to think he'll outlive his son's legal woes, according to NBC News. This is what they said, quote, the president has even lamented aloud that he might be dead before his son's case is resolved. Now, Biden's allies are now reportedly worried that Hunter's indictment will now strain the president's 2024 focus. What focus? Others in Biden's orbit, they are terrified about the impeachment inquiry, along with the underlying corruption allegations. You have famed Democratic strategist James Carville. He's continuing to sound the alarm over Joe's ability to win re-election. Peggy Noonan enthusiastically endorsed Joe Biden 2020. Now says Biden's re-election bid is a historic mistake. But tonight, this isn't just about the Bidens and Joe's age and corruption concerns. Put simply, Joe Biden has been an awful president by every single measure. Whoever's calling the shots over at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, they're doing a historically god-awful job. Every major problem facing this country has gotten dramatically worse because of Biden policies. Biden can't even get an endorsement from the United Auto Workers Union. They're now striking after years of green energy regulations that are wreaking havoc on U.S. automakers, forcing electric vehicles on a country that doesn't want them and on workers that are going to lose their job. And meanwhile, inflation, that continues to rise after a year of historic increases, homelessness, crime spiking, especially in blue cities and blue states, the border worse than ever. It was just named the deadliest border region on earth. And as we speak, thousands of illegal immigrants, mostly single men, by the way, abusing the asylum system, crossing into the U.S. every single day. Our very own Bill Malugin just witnessed one of the largest mass crossings in the history of this country. Over 2,200 individuals crossed into Eagles uh, Pass in Texas just a few hours. Uh, that's all it took. Keep in mind, the illegals are now coming from all over the world. That includes China, the Middle East, uh, Africa, Latin America. According to a Homeland Security audit, 76 percent of all illegal immigrants taken into custody are merely just released into the continental U.S. by the Biden administration. By the way, no background check. The world is also more dangerous and far less prosperous under Joe Biden. It's not just the disaster in Afghanistan, the unchecked hostility from China and Russia. Now the mullahs in Iran, they have access, thanks to Joey's gift of ransom, $6 billion to spend on terrorism and weapons and the nuclear program or whatever the hell they want to spend it on. That, of course, the generous gift from Joe Biden in the form of a ransom payment for five U.S. hostages. I thought we didn't pay ransom for hostages. And on top of it, he's forcing other countries to also give them money. Then, of course, we have the anti-Semitic, anti-American United Nations. They're alive and well all over New York City this week, probably happy about the payment. So expect a pretty warm, warm reception for Biden's speech that'll take place at the U.N. tomorrow, along with several days of horrible traffic in New York City. You, the American people, you pay billions and billions and billions of dollars a year for the privilege of hosting this pointless traffic jam that's known as the United Nations. We should get out of the WEF, the WHO, the Paris Climate Accords, and frankly, uh, you know, look at all the countries. Look at the, the head of Iran is coming here, the head of all these hostile regimes coming here. Just about every other global organization hates our great American way of life but, of course, they're more than happy to cash our checks. You pay the bulk of monies for the U.N. that has historically been anti-U.S. and anti-Semitic. Maybe it's time for the U.S. to now boot the U.N. into the East River. Or how about this? Let's let China host the United Nations. They can pay the billions. They can fund all these, you know, green projects that they're pushing on the world while the U.S. is wasting your money. Also, if the U.N. is really so deeply concerned with all this climate change and all these human rights, well, they should probably relocate closer to some of the source of their problems. Again, 
The People's Republic of China would be a great choice. Unfortunately, the U.N. is here to stay under Biden. He, he values the global community far more than we, the American people. This is America last on steroids. Tomorrow he'll speak to the U.N. for the third time as president, but he has never managed to visit East Palestine, Ohio. He, you know, he just can't seem to find the time.